Hello everyone and welcome to Close Up on America's Business. I'm Michael Nader. This is the television news magazine that goes behind the scenes of the most successful businesses across America. We meet and talk with many of the most innovative business leaders in the country today and learn how new technologies are changing the world around us and in the ways in which we do business. You are about to see one of the most interesting and informative segments we've had the pleasure of presenting on this show. It spotlights a company that is one of the most outstanding in its field, a company that impressed us as being one of the very best. Welcome to Geno Stakes. May I help you? This is a story about a man who defied all odds to at least match, if not overtake, the king of Philly cheesesteaks. Hi, I'm Nancy Hornbeck reporting from South Philadelphia. This is Gino Steaks, and with all its neon and bright lights, you just can't miss it. But this is not where the electricity stops. Go to Gino's any day of the week, any time of the year, and you will find the outspoken owner of Gino Steaks, Joey Vento, and his son, Gino. It's a, a business that's starting out in 1966 with a few dollars and trying to make myself the name of being the best in the cheesesteak business, okay? Now there was a, there's a guy across the street that called him Pat's King of Steaks, so I was going against a big, big competitor. And uh, so far as that goes in the history, nobody's ever, ever competed with the man. So I had a, a challenge ahead of me. But I knew I was good at what I did. And uh, the biggest question people ask me, well, why would you want to open up against the biggest man in the city knowing that Everyone else that tried failed. And my answer to that was very simple. If you want to sell cheesesteaks, you go where they eat cheesesteaks. I mean, I always uh, emphasize jeweler's row. You have one jewelry after another. So the thing is, who is the best? That's what you, so you got competition. I love a challenge. And like I said, I think I am the best, which I, I know I'm the best. Okay, so I had to prove this to people. In the beginning, it was rough. Don't get me wrong now. We had to get people to either stumble on my payment or maybe the line was too long, of course, Steve, think, well, I don't want to wait on Let me give this a little guy a quickie. And they found out that, this guy, hey, this guy knows what he's doing. He's got a great product here. And I build my business one customer at a time. So what you see now is a well-established business. I've been here close to 40 years. What makes your cheesesteaks the best? Well, we use thinly sliced ribeye of top quality. Onions cooked to just a certain point where they're not mushy, and they got just a, a crunch to it. And the trick is, is here we have your choice of cheese. Where's American or provolone? With a, a, a nice Italian roll, not too heavy, just a little lightness to it, a little like dark color to it. So it has just a slight crunch, because you don't want anything heavy. Besides the great food, what sets you apart from your competition? From any competition is my quality, number one, and cleanliness. There's nobody, but nobody could beat me. I won't allow that. They just cannot beat me for that. And in fact, uh, I was always a leader in anything, and still to today, if you look around, check all these places, they follow me, Chino Steaks. I personally designed this with me working every position in this place, and there is no other steakhouse. Look at the ceiling. You feel like you're in a casino here. There's no steak. They don't want this. They don't want mirrors because you have to clean this stuff. I mean, this floor, you can eat off my floor. And that's, and that's the greatest compliment in the world when people come over and tell me that. You can't give me a better high than that. I see you have pictures of famous people all over your wall, so I'm assuming these are some of your clients. This is the celebrity booth. I, call, I named this the celebrity booth. You're surrounded by celebrities and they're all at one time. It'll be here. You got Patti LaBelle's been over here. We have Mitch Miller's over there. Britney Spears naturally was here with Justin when they were together. Michael Jordan was here. Unfortunately, I wasn't here tonight. He was years ago when he was here playing. Nicholas Cage has been here. Very, very nice gentleman. And you know the funny part? They all want to make a steak sandwich. They all take a picture making a steak. Of course, we're sitting at the VIP table. So that must mean I'm a VIP and that I'm going to be on your wall one day. Is that true? Most definitely. <laughs> definitely will be up there. Why didn't you name it Joey's Steaks? There was a Joe Steaks here. Beans that found me name wasn't that great at that time in the name. I couldn't very well name it after my dad, which I would have loved to have done that. 
So the next best thing, we look on the bust of the door that was on here, and it had the word Gino, one of the kids I used to hang with that hung on the corner. And it was spelled G-I-N-O, but at that time there was the Gino hamburgers. So that's when I said, let me change the I to an E so there is no problem, okay? And that's what happened, so I named it. And uh, unfortunately, well, fortunately for me, the Gino hamburgers are no longer in existence. Now this was in 1966 when I did this. 1971, my son was born. What appropriate way to name my son, <laughs> Gino. So this is uh, how he came about. And this is, now he's the famous Gino. So when he asks for Gino, he steps up. I'm in the background. Okay, yo, son. Tap my shoulder. How about me? Give me a little plug here. You know what I mean? <laughs> Basically, uh, the title I would give myself is manager slash um, apprentice to dad. Um, basically, when he's not here, I run the whole shift and everything and overlook everything. Um, but overall, I do the managerial stuff, the, um, you know, the cashing out and the, the customer relations, the TV and the music videos and commercials and all that stuff. Why do you feel Geno's is so successful? The quality, the cleanliness, um, you know, basically our service, you know, I mean, you can basically come up here and get a sandwich, soda and fries in less than three minutes. Since you're the second generation, what lessons have you learned from your father? Basically, uh, work, work, and work. <laughs> um, he, I mean, he's been doing this all his life since seven years old, so basically he's trying to instill in me like how to run the business all that, where I'm more of the mediator, kind of nice guy. He's the old school, so we're kind of like my ways and his ways kind of coming together. Are you as involved in the community as your father? Oh, definitely. Um, we, we do a lot of charity events, and on, aside from his charity events, I also have my own charity events. That I work with uh, AIDS children, uh, cancer children, cancer people. Um, we do the MS walk, I do the cancer walk, the AIDS walk. I mean, I basically feel very fortunate, and our business gives us a lot back. So I feel the more you give, the more you get back. What do you see for the future of Geno Steaks? I would say one word, endless. I mean, because the possibilities every day are just, it's constantly changing between the media, the customers, uh, just, you know, everything that's going around in the city, uh, news happenings, events. I mean, every day is different. I mean, when I come into work, I never know what to expect. Tell me about your staff. Um, most of our staff has been here for over 10 years or more. I mean, uh, the one guy, Jimmy, we were talking about, he's been here for over 30 years. He's basically like part of the family. He was uh, here just as I was basically born. Our, our staff is very unique. I mean, we have a very high pace, high stress job. I mean, they're very loyal, very trustworthy. You know, they do what needs to be done and they know what, and most of them know their job, so it's not like you have to constantly keep on over and over. They basically come in, they do their job, and they leave. Have you ever tried to improve on the cheesesteak sandwich with your own unique twist? My improvement was right from the beginning. I, I always had the better product right from the beginning. I mean, I always made a great product. There was nothing to improve. I just had to get it across to the people. This is the real thing. And that's, what, that's all it was, really. I didn't have to do anything. Is this your only location? In the beginning it was, but right now, with a little luck, the Philly organization, by some for instance, they asked, they wanted the best cheesesteak. They wanted to make the new stadium be part of, because the Philly cheesesteak is known all over the world. So they wanted to bring in an icon from Philly the show authentic for the tourists that do come into the stadium that might never have a chance or an opportunity to come down to the neighborhood to get the cheesesteak. So they wanted to bring it there. So they wanted the best. Here it is, Joey Vento. They got the best. And here we have lines here. It's unbelievable from the time, an hour or so before the game, the line, 50, 100 deep, all through the game. Now, where do you do all of your prep work? I do my prep work across the street. We have the big warehouse, so it's all my prep. I have all my stock there and everything. And I also have a building next to that with an opening. And that there is the store, my Harley Davidson bikes. Is this your first time at Gino Steaks? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Are you excited about that? Absolutely. <laughs> Who brought you here? This man here. What's his name? His name's Brian. Has he eaten here before then? I don't know. I He's a have. connoisseur of these things. Anytime come, somebody comes from out of town, I bring him to, to Gino. Absolutely. Uh, basically, people have called us the Las Vegas of Philadelphia. I don't know why, maybe because of all the neon and we got the fire flames and at night is definitely an eye catcher. Um, also, I was telling you about our lines, like on Saturdays, our lines usually start around like 11.30, 12 o'clock in the afternoon. Sometimes they don't even end until like after our shift at 7 o'clock at night, the lines are out. We have a couple hundred people deep and you know, when we're busy, we're pumping like, like one, two sandwiches a minute. 
and you try to do that for seven, eight hours, by the end of the day, you're like, oh, but I love it. I understand you are very involved with your community. Can you tell me about some of the awards that you've won and why you feel it's so important to be involved in the community? 1981, there was a police officer. I remember the incident that was slain on Locust Street, 13th Locust, by this character called Mamiya Jamal. Okay? I didn't know the officer personally at that time, but I knew the incident and knew all about him. There was a bike run for Danny Faulkner. And this is actually was my first bike run. So my friend said, let's go with him. And we'll jump into it. Take you on your first bike ride. I go in and I see with his thousands of bikes. And I'm part of it, right? Uh, so I get to hear the speeches all about Danny, you know, how he was killed and, and, and so forth and so on. And I got to meet Maureen Faulkner. And we, we kind of hit it off right off the uh, giddy up for some reason, you know. I, I, and the following year, I knew I was going to be a sponsor in that. I wound up being the big sponsor. And from there on in, it became, then I had what they call a Danny Faulkner day out here. What it was, I gave 100% of all proceeds to Danny Faulkner. That means, not after expenses, I picked up all the expenses. Whatever came into that when those registers went to Danny Faulkner. We raised $60,000 that day. And they also in the 911 affair. That was another tragedy. I said, what can I do to help that? And there comes another, I come up with the idea, let's have a 76-hour marathon with 100% same deal of proceeds. Whatever comes in for 76 hours at Geno Stakes will go to the victims of 911, including the firemen and the policemen. Turns out $120,000 was raised in that 76 hours. That's people that are buying the product and throwing money in the wind at the same time. You won the Governor's Award for Crime Prevention. Can you tell me about that? There's numerous victims, I could, uh, not to, uh, to get into the money part all the time, but I, I raise a lot of money for different causes of uh, people, uh, victims of crime, anything like that, that they need a supporter on, I'm there. I'm right there for whatever it is there. You feel it's very important to be so involved in your community. Now, how does that translate into your staff? I understand you have Jim, who's been working for you for 30 years. Over 30 years, yes. Over 30 years. Why is he still here with you? <laughs> well, I guess I can't be that bad of a guy, especially considering. I know you might not want to hear this, but him, him and his wife hit the lottery for $9.4 million about eight years ago. So to me, that's a compliment coming from him that he's still here to be my right-hand man during the day. And he just says, well, when I was young starting out, you helped me. And this is my lawyer to pay back. And you can't ask for anything better than that. So if you have a taste for the best cheesesteak in Philly, head on down to South 9th Street to Gino Steaks. And while you're enjoying that tasty sandwich, shoot the breeze with Joe or his son Gino, and you will see how perseverance and belief in yourself and your product can take you to the top of the cheesesteak kingdom. I'm Nancy Horn, back reporting for Close Up on America's Business. Mm, 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 that is good. Thank you for joining us on this special edition of Close Up on America's Business.